you require information. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, um, I read a book about you by Adrian Dwyer. I am understanding there has been material written. Yep, it was called X3 Extraterrestrial Medicine. That would be a appropriate title. Uh huh. It say. So Adrian Veer was um, introduced to already existing uh, uh, network of uh, healers who collaborated with uh, with the aliens in Israel, <clears throat> and it was in the uh, 90s and uh, maybe yeah, it was in the 90s, like about 10 or 12 years. And he 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 had a wonderful scientific mind, so he um, he asked wonderful questions, and you answered uh, you answered them, and he described what. what your conversations. Very well. What is it that you need to know then? <laughs> uh, what happened after that? So I think he died around 2004, more or less. So it's uh, 14 years later. I mean, the book was, I think, around 2001. So what happened in the last 18, 18 years? There is much that has happened. There is an expansion of this work uh -huh. in Israel, but it also has expanded to Russia and some places wow. in the United States. Also, there is one small area in the north part of the United Kingdom where there is a small underground lab there's a lot of alien connection there. And so that is why they choose that area. Very easy to connect with the aliens on a third dimensional level there. But what is our, uh, which, are, oh. Yo, what? which organization is doing this on the alien side? We are you, you. How, what's the relationship of you with the Girk Fikhnir? Girk Fikhnir has a Yuyil population. That is not who we are, but there are many Yuyil in the universe in different places. I am not from that particular alliance, but I do work with humans because I believe it's necessary for them to have this understanding. I believe the reason for my work is that they, they need to survive, but this kind of energy would have been discovered very shortly anyway, and had been already, actually already discovered, but not understood. And they could have destroyed themselves with, uh, not understanding this energy properly, they could have destroyed themselves if they added certain technologies to it incorrectly. Is it the same energy which is described by Constantine Mail? Uh, he calls it scalar waves? Yes, that is part of it, yes. It is similar, I have to say, yes. Uh, and also there is a, a device which is developed by uh, Dan Winter, which uses uh, also similar waves, of, which is a combination of um, uh, Royal Reich's uh, device, but uh, modified to produce um, spiral waves, or better say, helical waves with um, which collapse, uh, uh, which collapse uh, you, uh, with a certain angle. Yeah. So it's uh, so is it the same uh, same energy as you describe? It's uh, it's basically Dan Winter's machine. Yes, it has ah. to be. It it's used more effectively with technology and machinery rather than in its raw form. As it's being used, it can manipulate. Uh, the 
energy structures within the, the framework of the body in very positive or very negative ways, depending on how it's used. So uh, are you open to accept, to accept more healers? Uh, what, what, what's your criteria? Who, who, who can work with you? Those that are accepted into the program usually have strong energetic abilities and are resilient to um, a certain uh, energetic forces. They have to be rather healthy and rather upstanding. Uh, they have to be loyal to the program. There are a few ways that we choose our participants, and that is that they are very carefully chosen. And it is a secret society in the sense that they cannot speak about it. Um. So why did Adrian Dwyer die? I mean, he died, he died earlier. It was his time to go. I could not prevent that. I see. Um, tell me more about DNA. So um, I, uh, how is the X3 energy uh, interacting with the DNA code, with the genomic code? It interacts with, um, it depends on the way that it is sent into the body, into the DNA. You understand DNA is in the entire body, of course. So it is the way that it is sent into the body, how the DNA reacts to it. It can react in um, a stimulus way, as we, has been mentioned before, it speeds up the activation of the DNA and or it can actually slow down the reaction of the DNA, which causes the body to last longer and live to greater uh, years. But um, it, it has to be the exact vibrational equivalence of the body and the right um, language to the DNA. There are so many languages the DNA has. It has a chemical or more than one chemical language, but when it comes to its energetic languages, it has many kinds of energetic languages and sequences. Now, to start a sequence, you need the right stimulus with the right energy. Chemicals can be involved with that as well. So there is the, the entrance of the right chemical and energetic sequences to um, uh, to enhance muscle tone, brain thought waves, uh, the organs of the body, etc. So therefore, many experiments were done on animals and humans, and some were very successful and some were not. But we have seen that every human has a precise vibrational code within them that separates them from every other human and their their DNA is separated from every other human because of this vibrational difference. And so to find that is the first thing and to speak to it properly is the next thing. It took many years for us to decipher some of the energetic and chemical codes and their sequences to the brain and body. It is that there is more than one energetic code that can cause similar things. This makes the DNA very 
complicated, and you must know the intention of the sequence exactly to bring about um, uh, the proper outcome. Because it may appear that the sequence uh, is doing one thing, but it is actually preparing for another sequence that builds on top of it. Okay, I got it. So um, one of the most interesting things that I found in Adrian's book uh, was that the memory, at least I think short-term memory, is kept in, uh, is synthesized in, uh, in uh, syn synapses in the form of uh, microtubule uh, strings. So yeah. synapses are the places where one neuron touches another. So it's a, it's a connection points between the neurons. Right. So, so microtubules are actually inside and outside of the neurons, and uh, they constantly are built and degraded. So they kind of uh, strings that uh, grow and, uh, and shrink all the time. Uh, so Adrian Veer said that the growing of the molecules, he didn't say microtubules, but the growing of the molecular polymers uh, in, in the neurons uh, is responsible for short-term memory. Can you clarify that? He's, yes, it is true. Now, what has been learned about that also is that they act much like blood vessels in some ways, contracting and expanding in, uh, in response to DNA activity and brain activity. Do you understand that? I barely, barely. Very well. But these responses... Well, let, me, let me ask another thing. Okay, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say it is important that they expand and contract because it, it shows where the sequence is ending and beginning. That is uh, a, one of the results of a DNA sequence is synapse. So basically, synapses are located very far from DNA. Uh, the, the neurons are very long, like our uh, neurons yeah. in the spine, uh, they have uh, the, 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 the nucleus with DNA is located in the spine, but the, the endings of the neuron are located in the skin, so some of them are like about one meter long. Uh, and uh, the place where the endings of the neuron contact uh, another neuron are called synapses, and uh, yes. they are like they are like very very far from the from the DNA. So I just wonder how could the signal or the information can be transferred from the synapse, which is outside of the nucleus, very far, yes. to the nucleus where the DNA is. Yes, the, you have to understand that even though you, the DNA is not close to the synapse, that is true, that they are sending energetic and chemical responses to the entire body for the purpose of reaction and results. They must have a certain result, and sometimes that result is a synapse that must occur so that the proper action is taken in the body or in the nervous system. So you must understand that even though they are not seemingly connected, they have to be for the body to properly respond and be uh, properly interactive. So I, I, I know several ways how the information can be transferred. One way is obviously through action potential. Basically it's electric uh, charges traveling through the, through the uh, through the neuron. Yes. And it's a sort of very slow and very, very suspicious way of communication. It's, yes. it's, it doesn't seem to be too informative. Another way would be through uh, microtubules. You, this under the slower responses are directly from the, the DNA. The DNA is a slow responding um, it has, 
fast and slow responses. The slower responses are the basis for other responses and reactions. This is to build a base for another response, to build a base to uh, react in proper ways to all things in the system. So another, another way to connect, another way to transfer information is through microtubules. Apparently, microtubules go through the neuron inside, and also there is a network of microtubules outside of neuron that can transfer information energy through the tubules. Energy and chemical. The DNA works with energies and chemicals. And yes, that is absolutely true. And, uh, the, and the third way I think would be uh, some uh, tunneling, essentially uh, transfer of information without obvious carriers, just through, through resonances between distant uh, pieces of the body. Yes. But what causes all these things? What, what is the basic, uh, what are, where is the beginning to these responses? or the beginning to these things. It all comes from chemical and electrical. They are all stimuli. The, the DNA is the basis of all the releasing of all the information to the brain so it can react properly. It is the circuitry that the DNA uses to get the work done. Yeah, one of the questions which we had was, um, where is the memory stored? Is it stored in, uh, in the physical, or is it stored in the other dimensional place, and only retrieved oh. when, when it's needed? Both. It, it can be stored in physical and fourth dimensional, or whatever other dimensional. Re um, g let me give you an example of that. Um, sometimes when an arm is amputated, people will still feel the energy in that arm or feel the, uh, be able to feel that arm still, even if it's not there, because the DNA sends out the basic blueprint of the body. And in the basic blueprint, there is still that arm in the basic blueprint and the energy of the arm, it still sends energy to that area. Uh, so that comes close to the idea of um, Sheldrake about the morphogenic field. So uh, in classical in biology, we believe that the shape of the body is stored in the genome and Sheldrake suggested that genome is not stored in the shape of the body, it's only the uh, the key and antenna, the, device, the reading device, but it reads the shape from the morphogenic field outside of the physical. Yes. And that as we evolve, as the evolution happens, the, the shape of human body and the structure of human body is evolving in the morphogenic field and humans only read it from there. Exactly. That is true. Oh, wow. So that makes it a little more difficult to study from the physical. It's, uh, you know, yes. much of that is uh, un unaccessible to us. That is true. But you see where I'm saying that this is fact. That it is a fact that if someone loses a body part, energy still goes to where that body part should be. And that energy is from the DNA and from the, the blueprint or from the thought process that that should still be there, but it may not be, but it still will feed that with energy. Do you get that? Uh, sorry, uh, my last question is personal. I'm uh, being sick for the last three weeks. And it's very unusual sickness. It's more like uh, energy sucked out of me and uh, I don't see any infection or any other usual symptoms. Can you fix it? If I had my work with me, I could fix it. From yeah, this, can you, from this can you, realm, I cannot fix it right now, but I can come to you later, help you to 
rebalance the system and uh, bring all things into alignment in a proper way so that you feel better. Oh, wonderful. That would be great. Do I need to prepare in any way? No. You cannot prepare. There is no way for you to prepare. I, I, would, welcome, I would welcome your, 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 your therapy. Except for, I could say that if you are hydrated, that would work better. Uh huh. I I also have problem with my hydration. Somehow the water just doesn't absorb well. There is some weird uh, relationship with water these days. Understood. But hydration is important. So if um, everything works better uh, electromagnetically and chemically with hydration. I had one more question uh, which I wanted to ask also. So there are basically uh, lots of electromagnetic pollution here. Uh, this would be Wi-Fi, um, microwaves from the microwave oven, and uh, the the telephone, uh, cell phone, uh, cell phone waves. Uh, do you think that these are very negative, and which ones would be worse out of three? Um, well, they're all bad, but let me tell you this as they are continuing to become more prevalent, the body will evolve to include them in their in its network in some way. So because it realizes that it must either uh, be destroyed or develop a way to deal with these particular rays. And so they will uh, the first humans that are in contact with them will probably not evolve, but as time moves forward, man will evolve to accept these waves in a more natural way so that they can survive with them. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is all I have. I have to bring Jim back because of the time and thank you very much for your uh, conversation information and help You're and don't forget to visit me I need I need your help I will visit you later thank you